And um, welcome to this informative webinar session of the America's Competitiveness Exchange Program, the Michigan edition. Uh, the purpose of this session is to share information about the ACE program, introduce some insights about the partnership opportunities awaiting you in ACE Michigan's key economic clusters, and address any questions you may have regarding the application process. So this is the agenda for today. So we will start uh, with introductions and opening remarks from the ACE committee that we introduce themselves, and we will uh, provide an overview of what is ACE. Uh, then moving on, we will be hearing more about the specifics of ACE Michigan from our host, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. And then we will then move on to the logistics and the application process and uh, finalize with a Q&A session. So if throughout the presentations you have any questions, please make sure to make them uh, using the chat. We will get back to them at the end of the session. So without further introduction, it is my honor to introduce you Mitchell Havison from the Economic Development Administration, EDA, U.S. Department of Commerce. So Mitchell, welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, just quick check that you can hear me and see me. Perfect. Uh, well, EDA is really excited to welcome ACE to Michigan. We're really looking forward to the full week in May for Michigan to promote economic development innovation and entrepreneurship, and how they pulled together the supportive ecosystem. I was really energized by the innovation and collaboration I saw when I participated in ACE Panama just two months ago. So be sure to share ACE Michigan in your networks and complete your participant application ahead of the deadline on April 12th. Excellent, thank you, Mitchell. Um, so now uh, I'll give the floor to Emilio Lugo from the U.S. Permanent Mission of the U.S. to the Organization of American States, U.S. Department of State. So, Emilio, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Luis. Uh, good, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Emilio Lugo. Uh, as Luis said, I work with the U.S. Mission to the OAS and uh, support our uh, development counselor, Juliana uh, Ains Neville, who uh, is my supervisor. Um, I'm, I'm her backup for, uh, for this program here at the mission. Um, but uh, for scheduling conflicts, she wasn't able to be here today. Um, but on behalf of the U.S. mission to the OAS, I would like to express our support for the ACE program. Uh, we're all very excited for you to be here today to learn about it um, and look forward to you all um, uh, applying and, and seeing you in Michigan. Um, we continue to support the ACE program because of the tangible results that it delivers and the benefits that this exchange provides to participants and to the region. Um, and again, just looking forward to the amazing opportunities ACE Michigan will be offering this May. And we encourage you all to consider submitting an application to participate. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Emilio. And finally, I give the floor to Cesar Parga. Uh, Chief of Section of Competitiveness here at the Executive Secretary of Integral Development of the Organization of American States. So, Cesar, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Luis. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here in this webinar. Uh, this is a space for, for you to learn a little bit about ACE. I know we have some friends uh, who have been part of ACE before, and we have some new guest and, and we have representative from the permanent missions so feel free to use this space to to answer any questions or or guidance that you may need to apply or invite your networks to apply to the ACE program on behalf of the Organization of American States it's uh, an, an honor to welcome you all and to be part of this initiative uh, we are looking forward to having one more edition of ACE in uh, Michigan as you will learn today a little bit more about the agenda, the clusters, and the key initiatives that would be opportunities for partnerships and uh, collaboration for, for all member states and, and the leaders of America. So we, I'm going to tell you very quickly some information about the ACE. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, this is a partnership. And for the OAS, it's a privilege to work together with the government of the United States, the Department of Commerce, the Economic Development Administration, and the International Trade Administration and the Department of State to the permanent mission to the OAS. This is the, the collaborators uh, that are part of the, of the program and that are behind the scenes helping connect the opportunities with the member states and, and the leaders. And, and we have a, a great partnership as well with each of the regions that host ACE and open the doors to promote collaboration, build 
and accelerate uh, opportunities to uh, learn about economic development, but also put in action uh, results that lead to more sustainability and uh, trade opportunities, innovation and solutions that can enhance opportunities and economic development throughout the region. So uh, Emilio mentioned results, and I think I would like to emphasize that. Results, partnerships, collaboration, those are the themes that you will see in, in the program along the way. So we can go to the next slide. Why attend A's? And some of you who have been part of A's already know about this, but what we are looking for is for leaders of the Americas uh, from economic development perspective, rural, urban, and beyond, that are part of the decision-making space, but that also can bring lessons learned, uh, good practices, and, and connections that result in a specific projects, uh, new ideas, initiatives that can change the course of economic development, but also build connections and enhance the network. So there are several examples of what you can do through ACE, but it's basically connecting with a delegation, 60 plus leaders that are together in this initiative that come every time the ACE is convened to work with decision makers from the host communities and share experiences and practices on economic development, build new solutions and new projects, promote trade and investment. I think this is a, a key component for value chains and other opportunities that are around in the, in the Americas. And you will learn uh, a little bit more about ACE Michigan, but there is a common theme around ACE is that you work to build new economic partnerships, build opportunities related to hub uh, on innovation, entrepreneurial and sub-landing opportunities, as well as academic exchanges, research collaborations, and other options. So think about results, think about opportunities of collaboration around economic development, and how to bring the leaders from your networks to be part of this opportunity. So we can go to the next list. Again, the dates for ACE Michigan, are May 5th to 10th. So uh, the application deadline is uh, April 12th. We will we'll show you the link and the information to apply. And uh, we are hoping to get at least 60 leaders from the region. Uh, and uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn about the sites and um, communities that uh, the team in Michigan has prepared for us. And, and we'll hear a little bit about that. Uh, we're going to show you a quick video, and then we'll ask and introduce uh, Mr. Bob Metzger from the Mission Economic Development Corporation and EDC, who's the host and organizer of the ACE Michigan. So we'll go with the video and then with Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cesar. Yes, as we're getting ready the video, let me I'm gonna start sharing my screen again. So in a second, please bear with me. Okay, uh, can I get this confirmation and you can see my screen? Yes, you can see. Michigan, where the cities hustle harder and the workforce hustles hardest. This isn't just the American dream realized. This is success in its most concentrated form. Michigan, pure opportunity. Okay, so we are back, and now the floor to Buck. Thank you for being here with us. Ready for me? All right. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Bob Metzger. I'm with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. We're the state of Michigan's economic development uh, agency. 
Uh, we're a public-private organization. And uh, most importantly for today, uh, our organization uh, coordinated the proposal to host uh, the ACE program this spring um, and submitted that to the ACE OAS organizers. And uh, we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to welcome you to Michigan, uh, May 5 through 10, because our proposal uh, was uh, accepted. Um, uh, I uh, also had the have had the opportunity to participate myself in two ways programs, uh, most recently in Panama and prior to that Seattle. So uh, we have a little bit of background that has helped us uh, help guide our um, proposal development as well as our outreach. Uh, you know, uh, across the parts of the state that uh, we will be uh, sharing with everybody who joins uh, uh, the ACE Michigan program. Um, and uh, you know this is the slide that's up right now. Why Michigan? This is this is a slide from our website. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about MEDC in Michigan, I encourage you to visit uh, www.michiganbusiness.org, michiganbusiness.org. Um, and uh, I'll go through these really quickly, and then uh, share a couple of other reasons why Michigan. Uh, you know. Um, we have a diverse and abundant workforce that you know includes everything from a highly uh, skilled trades workforce for all of the manufacturing you know uh, work that happens in Michigan, but also you know science engineering. You know we we graduate a tremendous number of engineers because manufacturing needs engineering. Um, we have a business friendly work environment. I know that uh, every state says that. Um, but we have really worked hard over the last decade to make it easy to do business in Michigan and with Michigan, because we know that uh, most of the folks who you know will participate in the ACE program, you know, uh, may not be interested in uh, uh, you know our quality and affordable lifestyle because you're not necessarily looking to uh, move to Michigan. Uh, uh, maybe uh, you know unless you really love it when you're here, uh, but. Uh, we are really focused on on making it easy for for you to find the stakeholders and resources that you need uh, to help your business wherever it may be, or your economy, or your country, wherever it, uh, wherever you may be in the world. Um, access to markets, you know, we are very much a a, a state that is uh, engaged in uh, global industry. Um, one of the reasons why we're really so interested in participating in the ACE program is that. Uh, uh, Central and South America are, are markets that we frankly don't do enough business with. We don't have enough partnerships, uh, you know, in this part of the world. We certainly do, and with in with in North America, with Canada, with uh, with our, our our partners in Mexico. Um, but we really, you know, want to build uh, strong new and uh, and uh, in, in in improve existing relationships uh, with uh, uh, Central and South America. Um, we have a uh, tremendous global supply chain assets. Um, uh, you know, when you manufacture as much as we do, you have to figure out how to get it across the world. Um, and uh, one of our stops, uh, uh, Michigan State University has the top uh, global supply chain um, uh, program uh, in uh, in the United States. Uh, we talked about lifestyle, excellence in research and education. We'll be going over more of that. Um, but uh, you know, as I mentioned, we're, uh, you know, what's not on the screen, you know, we're looking to better connect and collaborate with Central and South America markets. Um, we're always looking to strengthen existing relationships and collaborations. Um, and there, you know, there are things that uh, everybody knows about Michigan and the Midwest, many of the things on this slide, we manufacture things, uh, you know, especially vehicles, obviously. Um, but that legacy offers an unmatched ecosystem for any country looking for manufacturing expertise for nearly any uh, any industry that uses uh, advanced manufacturing processes. You know, a couple of other things to know about Michigan: we're surrounded by four of the five Great Lakes. Um, we and we're really close to the fifth one, Lake Ontario. Um, we have great urban centers, um, several of which will be uh, part of the ACE program. Um, but uh, if you have a little bit of extra time. Uh, we encourage you to, you know, explore other uh, parts of Michigan. Um, most of Michigan, much of Michigan is is rural in nature, and uh, travel and tourism is a, is a key economic driver for us, and we want to expose you to some of that while you're here as well. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about the weather, which is probably the most challenging topic to, to, to talk about, because Michigan has a uh, four seasons and uh, in early May, uh, when everyone is gonna be coming here, it's possible to experience all four of those seasons in the same week. Um, 
Not likely, hopefully. Um, typical temps uh, are moderate this time of year, um, 50 and 60s in Fahrenheit. You know, that's, uh, I think, uh, if my conversion is right, 10 to 15 Celsius. Um, it will uh, it will hopefully be sunny, uh, but it could possibly be, uh, uh, there could be a little bit of rain. We have had snow in Michigan in May, but it's a real, real rarity. Uh, so I don't want you to worry about that. Um, but it will be a little bit cooler than it gets in the summertime. Um, and I'll just, anecdotally, you know, my little sister lives in Monterey, Mexico with her family, and she's been down there now for 35 years. And she and her family are always cold um, when uh, when they come visit us in Michigan, even if it's the middle of the summer. So bring a sweater, bring a jacket. Um, could we move on to the next slide, please? Uh, a little bit about uh, clusters and, and main sites, and I may I may cover some of this in in the in the my third and final slide. Um, uh, uh, you know, automotive and mobility. I'm not going to go necessarily from left to right here. Automotive and mobility, uh, you know, are uh, you know are a cornerstone of uh, of Michigan's economy. We make cars. We make the parts to go into cars, and uh, and we have R and D centers that are focused on you know, advancements in all aspects of uh, 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 automotive manufacturing, transportation mobility, um, and uh, uh, obviously very important right now, uh, the transition to electrification. Um, Michigan's automotive industry is, uh, is, uh, is rapidly expanding and enhancing its, uh, its uh, transition to electric vehicles. We, uh, in fact, some of the folks that you'll meet if you come here from our Office of Future Mobility and Electrification are are you know, supporting that uh, that effort across the straight the state? Um, um, advanced manufacturing, you know, not just vehicles. Uh, we have manufacturing expertise that applies across many different types of industries, and you will certainly experience some of that. Uh, appliance manufacturing, if you if you're familiar with the company General Electric, their headquarters are here. Furniture manufacturing will be in Grand Rapids, which is the home to uh, uh, furniture manufacturing, both for uh, residential and also for office. You may be familiar with companies like Herman Miller and Steelcase. Um, people may be surprised that we do quite a bit in the aerospace manufacturing industry. Um, you know, not like uh, like companies like Boeing, which uh, some of us uh, had the chance to visit when we were in Seattle uh, last year. Um, but there are all the other, you know, uh, you know, all there. It is very complementary. You know, all of the activities that are part of uh, advanced manufacturing for autos are complementary and uh, can be applied to uh, uh, aerospace manufacturing as well. Uh, agribusiness, uh, Michigan State University will be visiting. Uh, is the uh, is the first the first land grant university in the uh, United States. Um, they are huge both in agriculture and agribusiness uh, research and uh, and uh, programs and, uh, uh, and and degrees. Um, so we'll uh, have a chance to see some of the outdoor aspects of that, as well as uh, meet with some of the um, professors and subject matter experts in that uh, uh, from across the state. Uh, and you may be interested in knowing that uh, there's 300 agricultural, more than 300 agricultural commodities are grown right here in Michigan. Uh, uh, life sciences and medical uh, device equipment. Uh, you may be familiar with the company Stryker Corporation. Um, we're not going to be able to get to Stryker because it's a little bit too far outside, but you know, tremendous expertise, and we are we we uh, anticipate being able to bring in uh, uh, somebody from Stryker to be on a, a panel. Um, and you may also be familiar with the University of Michigan's uh, uh, remarkable um, uh, 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 medical center and uh, and. Uh, uh, educational centers uh, focused on uh, uh, life sciences and uh, and uh, medical. Did I cover all of them? I think I did. Um, so host cities, um, we're going to be uh, a little bit different than the last than the two ways programs that I participated in um, that were centered around a single great city. Um, we plan on traveling to several great regions of the state that are. Uh, uh, that are you know easily reachable by bus. You know we uh, we would love to show you as much of the state as uh, as we could, but we would need to, the ACE program to be a month long instead of a week long. Um, but uh, we'll absolutely make sure that you have resources so you know about uh, you know some of the things that are available in the uh, in the in the venues and locations that we're not able to get to. We're going to start and end uh, in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, you know uh, where. Uh, where much of our manufacturing legacy uh, began. And uh, 
Detroit, Michigan is a is a, one of the most uh, positive and amazing stories of, of urban renewal. You know, you may think you know what Detroit looks like and, and is like. Uh, Detroit is a uh, is one of the uh, uh, greatest stories of uh, of transition, positive transition um, from you know what was uh, some challenging times. But uh, uh, there are some places uh, that you will see in Detroit that you will, I think, be really positively uh, surprised by and uh, and enthusiastic about. Uh, population of Detroit's about 625,000. Um, and I'll, I'll just cover a, a couple of things that we're gonna do each day, cause I'm sure I'm probably starting to run low on my time. Um, we will absolutely be you know, seeing, uh, stopping into facilities that show how vehicles are made. Um, we're gonna be stopping at Saltbridge Military Base, which is uh, you know, another uh, base uh, that has been going tremendous transition and reinventing itself. Um, one of the things I'm very excited about is that we have two uh, manufacturing centers, uh, you know, that are um, uh, uh, that were initially funded through uh, uh, federal initiatives back in the uh, Obama administration. Um, the uh, lightweight innovations for tomorrow um, focused on lightweight metals um, and diacme um, innovated uh, advanced composite materials uh, institute. Um, uh, and they are co-located in the same facility in Corktown. Um, and uh, we'll be in Corktown a couple of times over the course of uh, over the course of the week. Um, from there, we'll be driving. Uh, and it's uh, it's not quite uh, the order that it shows on the screen, but we'll be driving as we drive to Grand Rapids. We'll be stopping in the East Lansing Lansing area. Those are two cities right next to each other. Michigan State University is located in uh, East Lansing, um, and we'll be uh, 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 touring. Uh, touring uh, some of their uh, agriculture um, um, uh, parts of the campus, as well as um, uh, stopping into a uh, their their steam uh, uh, their steam building, and it's the newest building on campus. And it was uh, it was built as a demonstration uh, building uh, using um, uh, mass timber product. So we'll be uh, uh, talking a little bit about mass timber as well. Um, we'll also be stopping by the state capitol um, and. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, getting a, a photo up the state capitol as we head to a group called uh, Peckham uh, Peckham Industries. Uh, Peckham uh, has contracts with the federal government, Department of Defense, and Department of State. They do apparel manufacturing for Department of Defense. Uh, they have a call center focused on uh, passport renewals and passport registrations. And uh, everybody who works at uh, Peckham has, uh, you know, is uh, is in the you know, difficult to employ group, uh, developmentally disabled. Um, uh, physically disabled, you know, and the, you know all of the work that they do is focused on, you know, finding ways to make uh, 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 difficult to employ populations uh, 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 employable and giving them all the uh, uh, resources they need to be successful. It's uh, it's something that we're very proud of uh, in the in the Mid Michigan area, and we are also hoping to stop in uh, a company right across the street from Peckham, Nio Waves, which is. Uh, uh, a, a startup spun out from Michigan State University focused on medical isotopes. Um, we will then drive to Grand Rapids. Um, we're going to be staying at the Hyatt Place in Grand Rapids. Um, and uh, the our, our first the first thing we do in Grand Rapids is go have a reception at Meyer Gardens, which is a a beautiful uh, indoor and outdoor um, uh, uh, art uh, uh, art uh, facility. Um, we will be uh, visiting a uh, life science innovation center, Grand Valley State University. We will be stopping at uh, Steelcase, uh, a, a international furniture manufacturer. Uh, some folks may be familiar with the company Amway, which does business uh, globally. Um, and we'll be having our reception at the Amway Grand that day. Uh, next day, we uh, drive to Battle Creek, uh, which is about uh, 80 miles south of Grand Rapids. Um, we'll be going to Kellogg, the maker of the cereal manufacturer, as well as uh, Duncan Aviation. We'll be in Grant in Battle Creek for just a little bit and then driving to Ann Arbor, home of University of Michigan. We're going to bring everybody to the big house at University of Michigan. If you're familiar, that is uh, it's a, a the their football uh, facility that uh, can uh, fit 110,000 people. There are there are it can uh, it, it can fit the essentially the population of Lansing in uh, in their stadium. Um, and then we'll be uh, uh, going to the American Center for Mobility um, in Ypsilanti, which is the next uh, uh, city over. It's a 500 plus acre um, mobility proving ground um, that uh, you know uh, was uh, 
uh, developed uh, over the course of uh, several years, and uh, and uh, MEDC uh, invested uh, uh, significantly in, uh, in in making that happen. It's uh, it, it is on the site of the former Willow Run uh, Airport, and it's uh, another great uh, redevelopment project. Um, and uh, we're and uh, then the following day we're we're or, oh and, and I'm, I apologize we'll have, be having our reception that day at New Lab, um, which is right next to the. Uh, uh, Detroit train station, uh, Michigan train, uh, Michigan Central train station, uh, maybe the most important uh, redevelopment project in uh, in the in the history of Michigan in a lot of ways because the the uh, train station was uh, had been abandoned for many decades, um, and uh, and uh, the Ford Motor Company bought it and has redeveloped it into a a, a true showpiece. Um, on our final day, um, we will be start starting at uh, robotic manufacturer Fanuc. Um, we'll be stopping at the Charles Wright Museum focused on uh, African American history. Um, we will be uh, one of the things that uh, was launched uh, at the Panama program um, that we'll be doing on the very last day at uh, Wayne at the Tech Town facility at Wayne State University is a uh, is a entrepreneurship uh, program uh, that will bring uh, uh, several. Uh, startups uh, from Central and South America to do a little pitch session. And we'll also have some Michigan companies doing a pitch, pitch session as well. And uh, everything is going to wrap up at the newly renovated Motown Museum that we're very excited about um, and uh, uh, is uh, is within uh, just a couple of miles of where we'll uh, just within a, within a mile of Wayne State. So all of our wrap up programming will be at the Motown Museum. Um, I hope I'm not too far over time yet, but I wanted to take just a minute uh, the major airport um, uh, that uh, I think probably everybody will be flying into is the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Um, uh, uh, and we're, you, that's probably about 18 miles away from, um, uh, pardon me, I had a call coming in. It's probably about 18 miles away from um, where we'll be staying, but uh, I'm very pleased to report that just last month, um, uh, the started a new shuttle service from the airport to downtown Detroit. Um, it is called the uh, the Air Express, and we'll make sure to get everybody on the website, but uh, uh, the, the the web link is dax-bus.com. Um, it drops off right in front of the hotel that we're gonna be staying at, the Western Book Cadillac um, in Detroit. And it is, uh, if you book a ticket ahead of time, it's $6 if you just walk up and, uh, want to use the bus it, uh, it goes up by to a, a whopping eight dollars so uh really really excited about that uh that is everything that i have uh let me turn it back over to caesar and luis thank you and thank you both and uh, we really appreciate all the effort that i mean to see and all their partners have Put together a great agenda and uh, you know it's not only about designing the program as as, as you heard there's a lot of uh, arrangements that need to be put in place to to make sure that there's time and opportunity to visit all these sites but also that there's enough networking capacity and leadership in each of the uh, visits to to make a, a possible connections and collaboration in, in this uh, uh, agenda uh, so in, in terms of uh, logistics and arrangements to participate, uh, this, uh, the ACE participation is a competitive process, so there is an application uh, format. Uh, in terms of what's covered by the ACE organizers, and again, this is a result of the partnership and the, and the support that the EDA and the Department of Commerce and the uh, Department of State through the permanent mission of the OAS provide to the, to the ACE program is that uh, everyone who's part of the ACE will be uh, able to do all the visits in local transportation. As Bob mentioned that there's a bus or a couple of buses that will take the delegation from the hotel to each of the sites and each of the cities that will be part of the ACE program. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the key opportunities in the ACE program is to have access to the sites, the leaders and the experts who are behind the secret sauce of some of these economic development projects, innovation, acceleration, and uh, partnership opportunities. And this is uh, uh, the networking opportunities and, and the access to these sites. Uh, if you think about it, to have a delegation from over 20 
countries of the OS member states and beyond, and all these sites, it would take a long time to have this uh, do it uh, individually. So the program brings this all together for you to pack these uh, opportunities in one week and multiply them by the delegation. So, so this is, I think, one of the unique benefits of the ACE program to uh, also cover the uh, meals and uh, and receptions, as as Bob mentioned, this this is covered for for all the participants, all all the meals that are included within the program, and in the hotels, the team in Michigan has negotiated some advanced uh, uh, blocks of of rooms for all the ACE delegation and special and preferential rates for for everyone who participates. So that's a a benefit that is available, and I think. The other piece, with together with the MDC, the EDA, Department of Commerce, the State Department, and the OS team, and, and you have all, all of us connected here, will be able to support your participation before, during, and after. And we count on, on that commitment from all the participants to be able to link up and connect with the, the rest of the delegation and the host sites. What do we ask for participants is to cover their airfare from your uh, country of origin to uh, Detroit and back from Detroit to, to your country of origin to cover the cost of the hotels and, and the lodging that, that was mentioned ahead of the of this slide, and then to make it to the uh, hotel from the airport and back. And then if there are other meals that are not part of the program and other miscellaneous items, so that's the commitment that we request from the participants. If we go to the next one in terms of the application process, we'll be sharing the link to apply. But as I have mentioned earlier, uh, this is a combination of, of, of requirements that make sure that when you think about diplomacy, economic development, leadership, and networks, the ACE is looking for leaders from the public sector, private sector, uh, research, uh, uh, academia, uh, entrepreneurs, who are able to make decisions, who are fluent in English, who can uh, also uh, make change possible within their communities, and then can participate for the full week on the ACE program. That's something important because we want connections with each site that has been generous enough to provide us access to have the opportunity to have the full delegation all week and be able to travel, to, in this case, to the United States, to, the, to Detroit and the other communities in, in Michigan and have the opportunity to cover the cost that I just mentioned before. Uh, so we also recommend to have proof of health insurance. And this is all explained in more detail in the application to guide in the application itself. So these are some of the requirements. What we are looking in the delegation in the next slides, please, is that we blend all these leadership uh, uh, opportunities from uh, senior uh, people from public, private, and academic sector. We have the, the privilege of hosting ministers, vice ministers, director of innovation, uh, uh, NGOs uh, that are active in the economic development uh, from the point of view of rural or, or economic de development at the uh, urban level. We're also looking for entrepreneurs and innovators. Uh, Bob mentioned uh, the partnership with the uh, Innovation Exchange Coalition. And, and I know we have Ryan here that together with uh, uh, Natasha has collaborated with us on, on mentoring and supporting some of these entrepreneurs. There's an opportunity to participate to do that in ACE Michigan as well. And uh, we also are looking for people who are able to create long-term economic connections and can explain in their application why they want to come to ACE and what they are planning to do after ACE. And also the balance in terms of gender communities uh, in terms of the economic sectors and, and the geographical uh, participation of most of the regions of the Americas. We are looking to do that. And there is also opportunity to participate from outside the region, but we're looking for leaders in, in the Americas. And then uh, also the idea of being able to cover the participation. One more slide before we turn it over to the question from um, that's it. I, I think uh, if there's any questions about the application process, we'll show you the link at the end, but uh, I'll return the uh, floor to, to Luis and open for questions, comments. We I know we also have some previous participants. If anyone feels uh, uh, 
to take this opportunity. We'd like to hear your experience. What do you have in terms of recommendations from new participants on how to take advantage of this pro program? What has been your experience in getting to results? We would love to hear from, from you as well. And we also like to highlight the partnerships that are important part of the program. The International Economic Development Council, our fee has been a great partner in terms of bringing leaders from uh, different communities who have participated in, in ACE, and also the US-Mexico Foundation and the Pan-American Development Foundation who have uh, supported the program and also bringing leaders and participating directly in the program. In the case of the US-Mexico Foundation, leaders from Mexico and different regions of Mexico. So we are uh, here to help you and let us know if you have any questions, comments, or, or any information that you may be missing. We'll show you the link so you can uh, follow the application process and we remain available for your questions about the program. Please take advantage of the opportunity of having EDA state and but most importantly, our host in Michigan. Excellent. Thank you, Cesar Bob, for a very thorough uh, explanation of the ACE project of the ACE program and in particular ACE Michigan. So uh, the floor is open. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to just raise your hand or just take, take on the mic. Also, you can uh, write um, your, your questions in the chat and we'll be happy to, to answer them here as, as we have the entire ACE committee and also our hosts uh, from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Uh, also, previous participants, as Cesar said, if you guys uh, feel uh, to share some about your experience about what the ACE program, I think this is one of the programs that once you you experience that you 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 actually embrace and see the the community of practice that that, that, that is created. So, I'm not sure if anybody from our previous participants would like to share if we don't have any questions so far. Yeah, so we have Gisela Montalvo. Gisela, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Luis. Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this uh, webinar. I think it's really important to have all this information before we make the application. I want to introduce myself. I am from Ecuador. I am the executive di director of the Ecuadorian Chamber of Innovation and Technology. Um, and we we have been able to participate in the program that you made here in Ecuador two years ago, I think maybe one year and a half. And it was really great because we have the opportunity to make like a pitch, as you said, that is in the agenda. We made a pitch with our tech company, so it was great. And we really want to, to apply and postulate for this um, Maybe the answer is no, but I want to ask you if there is any grant or any option that we can have so we can have some support, economic support to participate, because I think that we really understand the importance. We really want to participate and like uh, to promote more Ecuadorian companies to assist or other organizations of the ecosystem. What uh, our chamber is making is creating the tech and innovation ecosystem here in Ecuador so we can work together to have more opportunities. And one of our most important tasks uh, is the exportation of services because Ecuador is known for their fruits, for our shrimp, for our roses, but not always for our tech services of software innovation companies. So is, is there any grant or any help or any option that we can uh, uh, like apply so we can have an opportunity to go as an ecosystem, not only for the members of the chamber, I'm thinking about uh, some of the clusters that we have created uh, here in Ecuador that we really need to make them some more strong. So. That's my question, if there is any option uh, for this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gisela. And perhaps Cesar can take on these questions. And thank you, Eric Maureen. I, I, see, I see that you have raised your hand, so we'll, you'll be next after we answer the first question. Thank you, Gisela, for the for the question. And I think you touched on, on two important 
topics. One is that uh, people who participate in ACE is uh, also to, to lead a community or an ecosystem. So I think that's the way that uh, the, the previous experiences have, have demonstrated that when the ecosystem and different partners host ACE and then participate and, and represent and connect their own networks, that's a great value of the program. So so thank you for noting, noting that. And, and, and we had the opportunity to host uh, ACE in, in Ecuador. And, and we have Christina Solis here now at the, as part of the OS team, but uh, she was an instrumental leader hosting the program in Ecuador. So we're happy to have her on board. And then in terms of the, the financial support, there's, uh, and, and I, I, I should have mentioned this, thank you for bringing that in the, in the question, is uh, to, to indicate that there's a limited financial support, and this is the a part of the of the funding that the ACE program has from the Department of State, the State Department, the permanent mission of the United States to the OES. It's, uh, it's not for, it's a, it, there are a few instances where this support is available. It's very competitive. So when you apply, there's an, uh, a section of the application that requires to indicate whether you need support to participate it's, it's limited so there's not a lot of sp spots for that but if, if that's the case please note it in your application and, and indicate uh, you know what kind of support you would be requiring it's, most of the time the support is partial uh, but uh, the the funding from the state department is in particular to support uh, the, the leaders from Latin America and the Caribbean to join the, the program and to be able to make a difference when they come back to their country. So so we appreciate that that support and, and that will be evaluated by the ACE committee and, and we'll, we'll be able to, to provide that information. Um, there's a point as well in terms of the ACE application process and, and I know we have Ryan here with us is that for entrepreneurs there's a special uh, kind of support as well within this scope of financing available from the Department of State. For those entrepreneurs that are selected to be part of ACE Michigan, there are four spots that would be able to participate in the partnership with the Innovation Exchange Coalition to get a mentorship and, and, and assistance to connect with the ACE delegation and the ACE sites. Uh, but you know, we'll be uh, providing more details on, on that along the way. Uh, but we're working on, on setting the arrangements for that. But as part of the application, there are specific questions for entrepreneurs to be responded and, and they would be part of the evaluation to consider that special support for entrepreneurs. There's some importance there also in the uh, geographical balance and diversity and, and representatives from, from different communities uh, across the Americas, uh, but particularly Latin America and the Caribbean. So I'll, I'll stop that. I hope I answered the, the question, Isela, but uh, for my colleagues, if anyone wants to expand on this, uh, please feel free to, to do so. I could just add, I could, I'll put my email in the chat. So if there's any other questions about the um, the startup showcase um, and some of that uh, Caesar mentioned, um, you can send me an email directly as well. Great, thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, Ryan, Cesar, and Gisela for your question. So, Eric, uh, Marin, uh, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, my name is Eric Marin. I am a business devel development manager for Deloitte Latin America, Deloitte, the consulting firm. Um, I'm based in San Jose, in Costa Rica, where I'm from. Um, and I, I previously was a Costa Rican diplomat um, in, in Washington, D.C. for many years, and I, I started my career some 15 years ago as an intern at the OAS. So, so it's nice to, to be connected in that way again. Um, but my, my question is more on the, on the timeline of, of the applications. Um, I, I think I, I understand that, that the deadline is until the 12th. If you have an estimate of when you will be contacting participants that have been selected, um, just considering that for, for some of us, that would be, if selected coming from the region, it, um, booking flights and everything is a little close to the, to the, to the dates. Um, and I understand it's it's 60 participants, I think. Um, if you have a sense of, of how many applic applicants you get from the region, um, just probably from 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 previous um, some sessions. And um, if if there's any, you know, if, if you look for any quota from certain countries or, or what the diversity is, um, 
And and yeah, they think thank you so much for your time. And and hopefully one of these can be in Costa Rica at some point in the near future too. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Um, Cesar, perhaps you want to take on this one too. Okay, thank you, thank you, Luis, and thank you, Eric, for the question. Uh, as I think uh, the application deadline in this case is uh, April twelfth. So uh, at the the notice to in terms of the acceptance, I think can be expected around those dates. Uh, uh, so so I would say that within the next ten days right after the deadline that that's probably the the, the, the earliest uh, you'll get information the applications are considered on a rolling basis but i have to say in in the in the case of ace michigan we we have ace panama uh, recently at the early february end of, of january so i think that shortened a little bit the, the timeline for ace michigan but but you should be hearing back very soon and, and I think uh, April 12th is the, 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 I think the closest uh, expected date to, to get back a, a response. We try to get as many countries as possible, but the most important thing is to have decision makers at the, at the, at the right level to make change possible in the region and connect with others. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's part of the criteria, uh, as, as, as he was mentioned in the presentation. Those are all elements that are taken into account, but the most important thing is that, that there's uh, a plan and an opportunity to, to make uh, uh, use of these connections to, to improve the communities around the, the Americas. And in terms of the number of applications, it varies, but, but you know, we always get, unfortunately, more than we can accommodate for the program. And, uh, and, and the program has expanded a little bit in terms of the number of spots, and, and we want to thank Again, the, the, the Department of State and EDA, but also the team in, in Michigan that has been generous to open the, the spots to as many people as, as possible, uh, because we have had, the, you know, the, unfortunately, not enough for everyone, but we want this to maximize the, the spaces. So, so we hope to, to have all, all countries represented in, in the region, but what we know is normally between 20 and 25 countries that, that are represented in the, the program. So there's no specific quotas, but it's just trying to find that right balance in the delegation among the different profiles and the, the leadership uh, in all the sectors provided. Excellent. Thank you, Cesar, and thank you, Ray, for your questions. So now I'm going to show here this, um, sorry, um, here's the slide where you can actually click to apply. Of course, I mean, the, the, the floor is still open if you have any questions or comments, uh, please. Uh, so just let me know if uh, if you can see now the screen, so you can scan the QR code and it will take you directly to ACE Michigan landing page, where you, there you will find all the information that is included in the application guide and also the uh, the application form. That is the one that you need to submit before the deadline, that is April the 12th. And I'm also sharing on the uh, on the chat uh, the link directly. So if you, if you prefer, if you want to use that one as well, you, you may do so too. Okay, but... Uh, you know, the floor is still open, so if there are any other comments or questions, please feel free to raise. Yes, so we have Eduardo Garcia, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the presentation. My name is Eduardo Garcia, Director of Economic Relations at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of El Salvador. And of course, uh, getting to know all the information that you just shared is uh, kind of uh, very important for countries since we can see that part of the clusters that Michigan has been working for many years ago are also part of of uh, a specific and prioritized sectors that El Salvador has been working in the recent years. So we can identify it, uh, a lot with uh, the priorities and all, all the topics and, and, and the sectors. And part of, of job at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also, of course, review the information uh, to maybe be able to participate, uh, but also to share it with our Minister of Economy and also with uh, our uh, investment promotion agency of, of our country, Invest in El Salvador. And my question is more related to know 
if because we don't have like a previous reference of uh, uh, previous uh, Salvadoran participations uh, in, in in this program. So I just want to make sure like if we can recommend our ministers and authorities to to also to apply it and participate uh, in this program, they will be able also to get uh, to meet uh, companies that might be interested in invest in our country because that is kind of the, the priority that we can we we are seeing right now of of course they can uh, do uh, public policy in order to implement national policies regarding uh, education and also training uh, and specific uh, programs uh, for technology uh, industry and, and and some other areas but specifically uh, this additional comp uh, element of of seeing if uh, the ACE program can also be in a space where they can find uh, an opportunity to promote our country in terms of uh, investment attractions. So if you can also clarify me on this, so we can also add the recommendation for the Salvadoran team that might be interested in applying to, to, to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, I'll refer this to, to Cesar too again. I don't know. Mitchell, do you want to say something or anything? Okay. You did a fantastic job. Okay, thank you. No, well, thank you for the question, Eduardo. I think it was in, you, all the items you mentioned in terms of the possibility of having the, the investment promotion agency, or the Ministry of Economy, or the team related to to economic development and innovation. I think those are very pertinent profiles. We have got that kind of a profile participate at, you know, at the ministry level, vice minister level. We have also investment promotion agency. In fact, I would say over the last few programs that investment promotion and the chambers of commerce. And I think we have Misha here with us from, from Barbados. They have created a very good group in, in terms of connecting uh, leaders uh, interested in investment promotion and, and building, you know, connections and learning from each other. I think that's precisely the the, the, the value added. And, and, and in terms of the delegation, there's a lot of opportunities throughout the week to connect with the delegation and, and with the peers that come from public, private sector, research companies, NGOs, entrepreneurs. So the idea is to have those links among the 50 or 60 participants that are part of the program. And then with each of the sites, you know, the program is diverse in terms of the content. We have five clusters and, and there are different leadership uh, positions there from local governments, uh, in, in, in companies, universities, but each of them represent a network and opportunities. Uh, and this is a multi-stakeholder platform. So there, the idea is to have connections in multiple ways bring results and partnerships together. So I, I would say it, uh, the way you describe it, it's, it's very uh, connected to what this program is looking for. So we definitely recommend uh, to, to share the information on the program and to send the applications soon so, uh, so they can be considered uh, for, for, the, for the program. I think what, what oh, good. Doing. Thank you, Cesar, and thanks thank you, for your questions. Uh, it seems that um, most of the questions have been answered. Um, I did receive one direct question, but I already answered. So the question was if, if it is possible to participate in just certain parts of the program. And as we discussed, that is not possible. The idea is that uh, the entire delegation participates in the entire program. That is a, that is a requisite, and, and we cannot make exceptions when it comes to that. So that's, that's important to highlight. Um, um, and uh, it seems that there are no other questions here in the chat. So um, I don't know if there's any other questions here on the floor. Otherwise, I think uh, it is it's time we can wrap up the session. Uh, but without saying that again, here in the in the in the in the screen, you can see the QR code that will take you to the landing page. Feel free also to follow us in our social media. We'll be sharing most updated information. You can find us on LinkedIn as the America's Competitiveness Exchange Ace. And also, if you follow us on, on, on X, former Twitter, is at React Network. 
uh, that you can find a few at the, at the bottom of the page. Um, and again, so thank you everybody for your time. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to get to know you um, and to explain a little bit about the program. So we look forward to receiving your applications. Please also share and spread the word with your own network. Uh, we really appreciate that. So unless there's anything else to say from the AIDS committee or, or any of the participants, that's it. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a good, um, have a good uh, Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you. See you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. And, and we can stop uh, recording, but we can remain online. If anyone has a more informal question, we are available for five more minutes or, or so. Uh, if, if you have any, any questions to any of the, of the issues we covered. So thank you, everyone.